First of all, uh, the market was going down uh, significantly for eight or nine months when we spoke uh, on June 17th. And at that time, virtually everyone you had on was saying negative things. And the concern was uh, universal about inflation and higher interest rates and oil prices. And I want to point out that every time everyone tries to predict macro, uh, they're almost always wrong. And from going back to Greenspan in 1996, when he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know when, when he said it was irrational exuberance, and then the stock market doubled the next four or five years, uh, or the uh, executive you had on predicting oil prices, uh, when oil prices, uh, this summer he said oil prices, and he should know, he's the head of an investment bank about oil, and uh, oil prices were 120, he said to be 150 uh, by summer, and now they're 90. Uh, and uh, oh, commodity prices overall, everyone was worried about them. Uh, everything across the board is down 30 or 40 percent. Uh, uh, the economy is slower. Uh, inventories are being destocked. Uh, so the uh, economy is definitely slow. Hi hiring freezes are taking place. So the economy is definitely slower. So it's easy to get out of inflation. It's impossible to get out of deflation. So we never predict anything about the economy or about the stock market. Uh, just when you look at the prices of companies that were selling in June and that are selling still now, uh, there are prices that are uh, unusually attractive relative to the company's opportunities long term. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I can't tell you this was the bottom. Uh, who knows? Uh, but the bottom line is that these are all really attractive prices, really attractive times. And we've been buying then, been buying since, and buying, uh, you, know, uh, you know, continuously. Uh, so I, I was going to get to a few companies uh, Tesla, oh, SpaceX, Rock, uh, Rock, the Lululemon Rock. of healthcare. Rock, can I just, uh, just, just, just no, continuing that for, for just for one second, can I, I ask Becky if I could just, just add to that? Because we do talk about it a lot. And there's been, I don't know if you saw how many people were calling for new lows uh, all along, from June 16th all the way up. Everybody we have on says we're going below 3,600 on the SP. And I know you're not a short term guy, and that's not what I'm looking for here. But what do you think of the notion that? We had a really good bounce, but much more than most people thought, back to, to 4,200 or whatever you would, you would say. Now it's being questioned again, and it almost makes me think, instead of that being a, a bull, a fake rally, a bull in, a, in an overall bear, I think now this might be a quick bear fake out to, 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 question, to have people questioning wh whether they should be bullish. So yesterday we had a guy say, I've gone from selling strength back to buying dips. And I wonder if, I mean, that made sense to me. I don't think we see 3,600 again. Um, well, you know, uh, I've started uh, in business in 1970. And then 1982 uh, began Barron Capital. Uh, and at the time, we had a small number of assets under management that the Dow Jones was 800. And people were really upset about the market being, uh, you know, inflation, interest rates. That was when I started Baron Capital, 1982, 800 on the Dow Jones, now 32,000. Uh, but if you go back to uh, World War I, uh, in 1918, uh, we had the Spanish flu. We like to call things Spanish flu, Chinese flu. We never can you know, blame someone else all the time. But uh, there was inflation, uh, and we ended a war. Uh, and then the stock market, then you had the Roaring Twenties. And in 1945, you ended World War II, uh, and uh, the next three years, you had inflation, higher interest rates, uh, debt was higher than the uh, size of the economy, and the stock market, and then we started the Marshall Plan, 1949 to 1955, uh, the stock market tripled. Uh, then you had uh, uh, 1982, uh, of course, uh, that was following the Vietnam War. You had a lot of inflation, high interest rates, and what happened, the Dow Jones went from 800 to 32,000. So. Do I tell you that the market is going to, you know, so everyone is so short term, everything is so short term. So right. Elon Musk says that uh, the people who are most likely to be successful are the people who have long termism, who think about things long term, not, not now, and are optimistic. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then he says, and what you need, really need is people who have infinite time horizons, not tomorrow, not next quarter, infinite time horizons. So, you know, he may not get to Mars, uh, but he's certainly uh, investing so he can, or people are planting trees, right. not necessarily because they're going to sit under them, but because other people will enjoy them. So, so I think that the idea here is that every time, every single time, there's been a financial panic, there's been a war, there's been a COVID uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, an economic, uh, you know, uncertainty, uh, chaos. Whenever these sort of things happen, uh, the government steps in in every democracy that's ever existed and devalues our currency. And the way they do that, and the reason they do it is because they want to take care of their citizens. They want to get reelected, of course, and then they want to protect them. And, and they want to make the economy grow faster. And then to get out of the debt, this is not unplanned where we have this inflation now. This is planned. It's planned to make the debt worth less relative to the size of the economy and the economy to grow faster. It's a plan. And it always has been. And so what happens is we're investing in growth companies. So the growth companies are our hedge against inflation. No, we're not investing in commodities or Bitcoin or gold. Or, mm. We're not doing any of that. We're just investing in companies growing more than the economy. Economy grows six or seven percent a year, two or three percent real, four or five percent inflation.